Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Everything Onion Dip. That's right, we are not just calling this Everything Onion Dip because we're using Everything Onion to make it with. We're also calling it that because it's everything you've ever wanted in an onion dip and a few things you didn't even know you wanted. And now that I've covered everything, we can go ahead and get started with a little segment I like to call Meet the Onions. And in addition to some chives and green onions, we'll also be using some yellow onion and some red onion as well as something that kind of looks like a red onion, but it's not. And that would be the relatively easy to find these days, shallot, which I think is one of the keys here. So try to find those if you can. And then we can't do an onion dip recipe without reviewing how to dice an onion, which as you might know, starts by cutting off both ends, after which we will place it cut side down and then divide it evenly in two right in the middle. And then of course we will remove the skin. And by the way, as you're doing this, if a couple pieces come apart, just put it back together and keep moving. Right, this kind of stuff happens all the time in the kitchen and we can't let it get us down. But anyway, we'll go ahead and remove the skin. And then please note, an onion comes already divided into all these layers, which means it's basically already half cut for us. So all we have left to do is slice down like this, maybe about every quarter inch or so. And then once we've safely made those cuts straight down, we will simply turn the onion and start slicing across like this. And believe it or not, that's it. And there are certain recipes where we want to take our time and be very precise, but this is not really one of them. Right, as long as all these pieces are roughly the same size, we're going to be good. But one thing I will add, you can control the size of the dice by how close together your cuts are. Right, both the cuts going straight down and when we slice across to finish the dice. So for a smaller dice, make your cuts closer together. And then for a larger dice, make them farther apart. Right, that's for you to dial in depending on what you're going for. I mean, you are after all the Mike Tyson of your onion Dyson, so you decide on the size. But once you do, stick with it so everything's fairly consistent. And then once we've given those the initial dice, if we do want them a little bit smaller, we can always give them the old choppa choppa to break them down a little more. And then what we'll do once our yellow onion is exactly how we want is we'll head to the stove where we have a large skillet set over high heat, in which we have a couple tablespoons of olive oil. And we'll go ahead and we'll transfer in our yellow onion along with a generous amount of salt. And what we'll do here is saute these onions until they're nicely browned. And because we're using high heat, those onions are gonna take on a nice deep brown color, but they're not gonna have time to get super soft like caramelized onions, which as you might know, we do at a lower heat. So this is more of like a fast searing. And after about seven or eight minutes, you should have some nice color on these. And if you're into multitasking while those were sauteing, you should have been dicing up your shallots and red onion. Because once our yellow onions look like this, that's what we're gonna to toss in. And then we'll go ahead and lower our heat down to medium and we'll give it a stir and then saute all this together for about three or four minutes more. Okay, so we want to give the yellow onions a head start so those will get a little bit browner and a little bit sweeter. And then what we'll do with the shallots and the red onions is basically just take off the raw edge and get them to the point where they start to soften and sweeten, but just barely. And that way, hopefully we're gonna get some different types of onion flavor. But wait, there's more. Once those are set, we'll turn off the heat and then we'll add some granulated garlic, which is not garlic salt, it's just dried garlic, as well as a nice big spoon of minced dried onions. And with our heat off, we'll go ahead and stir those in. And if you're wondering with all these onions, why do we need to put dry in here? And technically we don't, but if you want it to taste like the French onion dip of your childhood, whether that was store-bought or someone made it with a dried onion soup mix, if you want it to taste like that, make sure you add the dried onions. So to me, that's one of the key ingredients. And I think personally, absolutely necessary. And that's it, once that's been stirred in, we will let that onion mixture cool down completely before we add it to our dip, which will start with some mayonnaise, followed by at least twice the amount of sour cream. And please try to get the thickest, firmest sour cream you can find. Which reminds me, you can just do this with all sour cream if you want, but I think it is better with a little bit of mayonnaise, since that adds some extra fat. And then to that, we will add some freshly ground black pepper, as well as a few shakes of cayenne. And then last but not least, assuming it's completely cooled, we will transfer in our onion mixture, which somehow as it sat got even more beautiful. And that's it, we'll go ahead and give this a very thorough mix. And no, we didn't forget our green onions and chives. Okay, if we're gonna be using fresh uncooked onions, we always wanna put those in right at the last minute. Since if we add those here, and then put that in the fridge for a few hours or overnight, the amount of that sharp raw onion flavor can actually increase, and depending on the amount, it can actually overwhelm the dish. 
And I really do think this dip's a lot better if we let it sit in the fridge for like four or five hours at least. And overnight's even better to let all those beautiful cooked onion flavors develop. And then what we'll do before we serve it is go ahead and take it out and unwrap it. And that's when we will add our green onions in our chives. So we will go ahead and stir those in. And other than giving this a taste for seasoning, since it might need another pinch of salt, but other than adjusting the seasonings, our dip is officially done. And we can transfer that into a little nicer looking bowl. And maybe depending on our mood, we can garnish the top with a few sliced green onions and a little extra pinch of chives. And that's it, our everything onion dip is ready to enjoy with everything and anything. But if you had to pick and could only serve it with one thing, that thing should be potato chips. And please have some respect for this dip and go top shelf when it comes to the chips. Okay, we don't want to defile this with some flimsy thin chips crumbling into it. Okay, so use something nice. And that, my friends, is the best onion dip I think you will ever taste. Just a tremendous amount of onion flavor, but all different types. Right, those sweet brown yellow onions, and then those slightly less well done red onions, and always delicious and savory shallots. And of course, the nostalgic magic of those dried onions. All balanced perfectly with those fresh raw green onions and chives we stirred in at the end. Oh, and before I forget, a little message to those people I call dipscapers. You know, the people instead of just taking their chip and dipping it in, they have to like smooth over the surface and landscape it first before they dip. All right, that's a bad look. Just dip your chip and get out. Oh, and you didn't hear this from me, but if you end up with some leftover dip, which you won't, this stuff makes the best baked potato topping ever invented. Oh yes, it's almost worth making just for that. But anyway, whether you end up with leftovers or not, and you won't, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.